So I've been running Dunst since pretty much the first day that I had notifications on Linux, but it's not the only notification daemon out there, and today we're going to take a look at a full-blown notification center called the Dead Notification Center, or also known as the Linux Notification Center. So if you're new to the channel, you know what to do, and let's jump right into it. So first thing, I think I should actually describe what a notification center is. So if you've ever used Windows, you know how you have that... Um, dock on the side that has all of your notifications in it. That's pretty much what this is, and this seems to be pretty much what it's inspired by as well. So if we have a look at it, this is on the GitHub page right here. We'll go through a bit more of it in just a moment. But this is how it actually looks, and my version of it looks pretty much the same. I've just changed the background color, and I also have a different level of blur. But it's very much like the Windows Notification Center, or I'm not sure what it's called on Windows, the Notification Dock, whatever it's called. But yeah, it's it's a very Windows-esque thing. So if you're coming from Windows, maybe this is something that you're gonna be interested in running, or maybe you actually care about not just seeing your notifications when they happen, but you also wanna see them for a little while after, because then you could also do things like clear them when you're done with them, basically. So this isn't a perfect program, and I'm gonna talk about the problems I have with it, but it has seriously improved since when I first heard about it. So one of those improvements that I'm talking about is this right here. So if you notice, there's actually an image for the album art in Spotify and also a little icon for Spotify as well. So this will happen with Caden Live and various other programs that actually have icons for stuff. So what was happening before was that it wasn't actually pulling in the images from like Notify Send and all of the standard ways of creating notifications. What it was doing instead was relying on something called notifysend.py, which some notification centers do use. The problem is, and some programs do use, but the problem with that is that not every single one of them does. So if you only have images from this non-standard feature, then it's not really going to work properly for those programs that don't use that feature. But now it will actually pull in those images from the standard method. So we have Spotify here, let's just play a couple of tracks. So as we can see, we have the album art and we have the little icon. Now, if you don't like this, you can obviously disable it as well. And I've slightly modified it. By default, it doesn't actually have a margin around the edge, which I'm not a big fan of. So I've added that margin and I'll show you how to do all of that. It's actually really, really simple. So let's just quit out of this. Okay. So the way you customize, actually before we get to that, if you want to start it, then just start it like you'd start any other program. There's nothing too special about that. And that goes for auto starting it as well. If you're running Dunst right now or some other notification daemon and you want to swap this one in, all you have to do is replace whatever it was with this program and it'll just slot right in just fine. So if you want to toggle it, you can use this command. I've just got that bound to super E, so that's how I'm doing that right here. But we'll get back to that in just a moment. If you'd like to install this program, it is available on the AUR. So go ahead and do that. There is a Git version of it and also a bin version. Feel free to install either version. It doesn't really matter. Or you could go the manual installation route and handle the dependencies yourself. Okay, so the configuration is where this program gets... What's the best way to describe it? I'm going to say a little confusing. So it uses two ways to configure it. One is you've got the configuration file, and through that you can do a lot of the aesthetic configuration and most of the regular configuration, so like all the features and stuff. So if you notice these buttons down here, all of this is handled through the config file. But some of the aesthetic configuration is handled through the gtk3.css file. Now I don't know why some of it's there and some of it's in the config, if I was writing this myself, I would probably put all of the aesthetics in one place or the other. But for some reason, there's some stuff mixed across. So I'll show you So I'll show you what that sort of stuff is, but just know that it's not exactly the cleanest method. So let's just bring up that config file. So it is actually, I'll go through the standard method of doing it just so you guys can see where it is. So we go into my config folder and we go down to dead. So it is in a folder called dead with two Ds on the end. And then the config file is called dead.conf. So once again, with also two Ds. I know it's also called the Linux Notification Center. I guess there was a name change at some point, but the actual repo didn't have its name change, but whatever. It's called the Dead Notification Center at this point. Okay, so for the configuration files, there's a couple of different sections. So we've got the Notification Center section. We've got the Notification Center notification pop-up. This is what I mean by terrible naming, but we'll get back to the terrible naming in just a moment. We've got the colors section and we've got the button section. So I'll briefly go into what each of these sections do and just, yeah, what you can actually do in them. So the notification center section will actually be used for 
the actual notification center here. So you can set a margin for it, you can set a width, you can use markup in it, you can ignore transient. I'm not sure what ignore transient actually means, but you can do that. Um, you can guess the icon from the app name as well. Now this probably shouldn't be in the notification center section because this also relates to the actual notifications themselves, but it's here. This isn't the most well thought out program, but it's definitely getting there. So the notification center notification pop-up, once again, terrible name. This is for actually configuring the pop-ups. So if we just make a, a notification pop-up, so this will let you configure this right here. So not all of the configuration for this can be handled in the config. Some of it's gonna be handled in that GTK file. So you can do things like set a monitor for that and set the icon size and set a maximum image size. So the icon size is the little icon. So that was the Spotify icon. The image size is say, if you are using Spotify, you have the album art, or if someone sends you a message on Discord, that would be their profile picture. So that's what the image is. And for colors, this is where you can actually modify the colors of the notification center and also the pop-ups. The one problem here is that you can't change the color for a normal notification and the normal notification in the notification center. The reason I say this is a problem is because you can do that with critical. So for critical in center, this is the background color for a critical notification when it's actually in the notification center. And the critical is for just when it pops up. Now, here's another point where it's really poorly named. So we've got critical and critical color. So critical is the background color. Critical color is the foreground color. Anything that has color on the end, I've noticed that's the foreground color. Why it's not foreground and background, I don't know but just know that that's how that works. And the interesting part is the button. So this is part of the reason why you'd want a notification center as opposed to just notifications. So in here, you can actually define buttons. So we've got a shutdown button, a reboot button, and a screen lock button. I'm obviously not gonna press either of these two, but if I press screen lock, what that's gonna do is actually lock my screen. So the way that this works is it's pretty easy. You just have a colon separated list of strings. So for the labels, we have shutdown, reboot, and screen lock. And then in the command section, you just assign a command to that label. So we have pseudo shutdown is assigned to the first label, pseudo reboot, second label, better lock screen, third label. And you can just keep doing that. And you can have multiple rows. You can define how many buttons are in a row. You can change the button height, the margin between the buttons. There's a lot of little configuration you can do with this. You can also change things like the button background color and the hover color and all of that stuff. So you might've noticed that the font is missing in here, but the font I'm using isn't something you've probably seen before. This is JetBrains Mono. The font doesn't really matter. The point is that you can't configure the font within the actual config file. Before we get to the GTK file, one thing I should mention is that the transparency actually is controlled in the config file. So if you notice, all of my colors I'm setting with RGBA, so that's red, green, blue, alpha. So that's how I'm setting the colors. So I've got my RGB colors, and then the last number on here is the transparency level. So I've got 0.8, which is 80%, because that's just what I'm doing with everything else in my system. So let's just go to a clean desktop, and you should get a clear view of that. So as you can see, you can see right through this, Personally, I'm a big fan of this, but maybe you don't want any transparency. And if you don't, you can either just use the RGB setter, you can use a hex value, or if you want to use RGBA, just set this value to one, and that's 100% opacity. So let's just go have a look at that GTK CSS file and see what we can do over there. So if you don't know what this file is, basically it's in your config folder. It, I don't think it's generated by default actually, but it'll be in a folder called gtk 3.0 and if it's not here just make this if the folder's not here also obviously just make it so i've got a couple of settings in here nothing too crazy you're also going to have to have a look into what sort of css you can do in gtk i don't know if it is the entirety of css3 or if it's a subset of it so go look at the gtk documentation about what sort of css you can actually do now, as for setting basic things like the font family, the foreground color, the margin, all of this stuff, that works perfectly fine when you're setting it in the CSS. But as I said, it may not be full CSS3. So go check the GTK documentation for what you can do. Now, one last thing I wanted to mention about the config file is that on the GitHub page, there are comments above basically every single setting. So if you want to have an easier time setting this, I would honestly recommend just copying the entire config 
into your config file and then you can actually get comments for it. And then if you need to, you can obviously delete as you need to do it. But I'm not gonna go into every single thing that you can configure today. So if you want a better understanding of it, then go look at the GitHub page. If people want a second video, I'm more than happy to do it. But for the time being, the GitHub page should suffice. So let's go have a look at those actual uh, CSS class names. So they're all documented right here and they're all pretty simple. They're really long, but they're all pretty simple. So the app name is this little app name right down here. This is Spotify. The body is the main body of text. So this cold rain side effects. The title is the bit at the top right here. The image is the image on the left and the icon is this little Spotify icon or Caden Live or whatever other icons you have there. And the only thing that changes between the notifications and the notifications in center. So this is notification in center. So for the in-center ones, you just use in-center. For the regular notifications, you just use notification. And when it is in the center, you also have a time on there and you can configure that one as well with this line right here. Now there's also the button close, which is this little button on the side here. So you can configure that however you want to as well. Now for the notification center, you can configure the time and the date. There's not much else you can do with it. There's not really much else in here because the buttons are controlled in the config file. So I'm actually covering it. These buttons are controlled in the config file, not in the CSS file. So it wouldn't make sense to be able to configure them here as well. It still doesn't make sense why you use the CSS at all and not just do everything in the config file. It would be much easier like that, but that's just how this program's written at this stage. Now, the last thing I wanted to mention is that you probably do want to bind a key to actually open up the notification center. You just run this command right here. So if we just bring that up in a terminal, we just run that, that opens the notification center. We run it again, it closes the notification center. So bind that however you feel like doing it. I have bound it within SXHKD. You can obviously do it however you bind keys in your system, but let's go down here. Kill, where is it? So all I've done is just bound that to super E and all it does is just run that command. I should probably check if it's open, but it doesn't really matter. If it's not open, it's just gonna fail anyway. So I guess it couldn't hurt to just show you how to launch the program when you actually launch your window manager. Now, it's really easy to do, and I'm not actually running it as my main notification daemon right now, as you'll see through the way that I'm setting it. So I like to launch stuff through my Xenit RC. There's plenty of other ways to do it, and someone's gonna complain about this method, but this is how I'm going about doing it. So right now I'm using Dunst, but if you want to launch the dead notification center, just go dead notification dash center, and then make sure you actually launch it as a background process. Because if you don't, your window manager is just going to lock when that program launches. So as I said, I'm running Dunst. You could put anything in here. So this isn't just for the dead notification center or just for Dunst. You could use something like TWMN or a bunch of the other notification daemons. It doesn't really matter. This method of launching it actually has no ties to the specific notification daemons. So I reckon that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about. So as I said earlier, this program isn't perfect, especially when it comes to variable names. I know they're bad because I've written programs that have variable names that are this bad. They need to be fixed and when they are, then I think it'll be a really, really good program. One thing I didn't mention as well is that there's a man page as well. There's just nothing in it. So yeah, there's no man page basically. So you have to go to the GitHub page to find out how to configure it, which is a little annoying, but I guess it's not the worst thing. At least there is some form of documentation somewhere. So there's some other problems. Like I want to be able to set a border around notifications like Dunst can and there's no way to set a default icon. So if you want to have a default icon for normal notifications, like you can do in Dunst, there's no way to do that at this stage. But if that sort of stuff doesn't really matter to you, I think that this is a really cool notification daemon. And if you do want a notification center, I don't know about too many other programs that do it that aren't directly tied to a desktop environment because I didn't mention this earlier as well. There's a bunch of stuff I forgot to mention. This has no ties to any desktop environment. It does use GTK. So if you prefer running Qt apps, then that's gonna be a problem for you. But besides that, there's no ties to like GNOME or to KDE or XFC, like some of the other notification daemons and notification centers have. So if you want a notification center without those ties, this is probably your best bet. 
So I reckon that's pretty much everything for this video. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm now aiming for 10,000 subs and any help be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've got my social links, so my Discord and my Telegram. So go check that out if you want to chat with me or get various video updates. I've also got my support links down below, so that's my Patreon and all of my other various donate links. So feel free to check those out if you do want to support the channel. But as always, it's entirely optional. You don't have to support the channel if you don't want to. And lastly, I've got my alternate video platform, so my BitTube and my library. So feel free to check those out if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.